Hello and welcome back to Pine City Apri. So I've been tagged in a collaboration to do a video on what I find that I am passionate about. I was tagged by the Green Dream Project and I'll have a link to their site in the description below. The collaboration was originated by Good Time Holler Homestead and I'll put their site link in the description below as well. I had to think long and hard to figure out what my passion was. So after thinking about it, I thought, I'm going to do it on bees. I know, right? So I thought I would give you a rundown on how I became a beekeeper. It all started back in, in about 1973. My father, Howard Otis, was the officer in charge at a Navy satellite tracking station in Rosemont, Minnesota. He had a lifetime dream to keep bees, and while there he got two hives, which he kept on base. I got to go to him whenever he would go to take care of them. At first I stayed in the car. Windows rolled up. The car was a uh, 1969 Toyota Corona. No air conditioning. Black vinyl seats. It got hot. Then one day I got out of the car and I looked a little closer at the bees. Next thing you know I'm right there helping. My job at first was to give them smoke. I got real good at smoking the front of the hive and then again the top after my dad opened the top cover. Soon I was up for greater challenges. I would help rob the honey. I would also help wrap the hives in tar paper to winterize them. Dad did not staple the tar paper. Instead, he took baling twine, cut them up, and uh, pre-tied a loop on one end. He would then cinch up the knot and lock the twine around the hive. Each hive would get three wraps. Now, I said that he would cinch the knot. He did let me try, but I was unable to tie the knot securely. That is a skill that I have not learned to this day. I can't tie knots unless they're in my shoes. In the spring, we would reverse the hives. That means take the top box off, remove the bottom box, clean out or replace the bottom boards, put the top box on the bottom and the former bottom on top, of course, we'd have to go through the hives first to find the queen. We wanted to make sure she was on the bottom so she could work up. I remember this because the bees really didn't take to us remodeling their home. Then I got a full bee suit. Full bee suits back then were very much like the interior of a 1969 Toyota Corona. Very hot. Today you can get ventilated bee suits, which helps a lot. Back then, not so much. I helped my dad all through junior and senior high school. I built bee boxes, put together frames, painted. I didn't like painting. White. So I would paint the boxes and I'd paint my name on them with the bristle marks of the brush. I bet he still has some boxes with my name painted on them. When I went off to college, I was not able to help like I used to. Then I had moved away, so I was not helped at all. Then suddenly I'm married. I have kids, a job, and no time to do anything with bees. They were always there though in the back of my mind. Just never had time to get a couple of hives and start on the journey back with the bees. Life sometimes nudges you back to places you miss and would like to get back to. In 2004, I was downsized from the company I worked for for uh, over nine years. With the economy at that time, after 9-11, uh, it took me six months to find a job. But I did. Only downside to it is it was in downtown Minneapolis. 70 miles, one way. It was also working odd shift times, depending on the project that we were working on. I really liked that job, and while it did not pay all that well at first, I was able to work my way up and was making pretty good money there. Then, 
the 2008 bubble burst. The economy took a dive. In 2009, I was outsourced for cheaper labor overseas. It took a full year later before I finally found a job working overnight managing a major big box retailer. This new job was a huge pay cut, but it was a paycheck. I again was commuting 70 miles one way, so I had no, again had no time to take care of bees or anything else. Wasn't even a thought, to be honest. After a couple of years, I was able to transfer to the big box retailer that was in my own town. It was a slight pay cut because of metro versus rural salary structures but I'd make that up in gasoline savings alone. However, things did not go according to plan. I got sick. I was dizzy all the time. I still am frequently. I got pneumonia, followed by influenza, followed by pneumonia again. Seriously, I wanted to die, but I didn't. I tried to get back to work, but was not able to stand or sit for any length of time. So I ended up retiring. After a little while of sitting around the house, I knew I needed something to do. But what could that be? What could it be? Maybe it could be bees. I had some reservations, though. With my bad back, dizziness, and breathing issues, I knew that I couldn't lift heavy bee boxes. Then, by chance, I saw a YouTube video on top bar beehives. I think the first one I saw was uh, on Wrangler Star. I thought I could possibly do that. So, that next summer, my brother and I, well, mostly my brother, because every time I tried to help, I would nearly pass out from heat and from dizziness. Well, we built a top bar hive. It was finished in late August 2015. Far too late to start a hive. So I had to wait through a long Minnesota winter. Finally, spring 2016 came. I got my bees. I started it. I loved it. Sometime mid to late summer, I thought, you know, I should video this so I can review it later. That's how my channel came about. 34 years since I was active in beekeeping. So much has changed. New pests, new parasites. But the same fascinating little creatures that one will learn from with each visit to the apiary, that's my passion. Bees, watching, learning. I'm going to tag two creators to uh, continue this collaboration. However, I'm also going to tag anyone that watches this and wants to do it. By all means, let's do it. Let's see what we're all passionate about. The two that I'm going to physically tag physically, is The Kilted Gardener and Homestead Corner. Links for both of them will be down in the description as well. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to smash that thumbs up button. Thumbs up are super cool, and you too can be super cool if you give me one. Do you know what else is super cool? Subscriptions. That's right. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? If you haven't, where have you been? I've been making YouTube videos since 2016 on my journey of keeping the bees. And I would really appreciate if uh, you could join in that journey with me. When you do, and you should, click on the little bell next to the subscribe button and that will give you notifications every single time I upload a new video. Well, thanks for letting me share my passion to you, and as always, have a great day.